Okay, um, here we are. We are in the land of probability and random numbers. We are moving along. We've got a bunch of videos to get through, but we're, we'll have, have a list over here and I have a couple more and then it says vectors intro. Once we get to vectors, we're really going to be dealing with some of the, the, the exciting stuff, really looking at motion behaviors, um, which is going to carry us for a long way through this uh, journey. But okay, so what have we done so far? We looked at, we, we know we have this random function. Okay, random, awesome. It gives us an even distribution of random numbers. Every random number has the same chances being picked as any other random number. We looked at Gaussian. We used the random class, the next Gaussian function, and, um, and we saw that this would give us a Gaussian or normal distribution of random numbers where we have most of the, the results that are picked clustered around the mean, and then there are some outliers um, depending on what that standard deviation is. But what if we want something totally custom, totally custom, like this is our distribution of random numbers. <laughs> you know, this, this random number should be picked a lot, this not so often, this really not so often, this a lot as well, this a medium amount. What if we want something custom like this? So, um, you know, this may seem like, well, just this kind of abstract discussion of probabilities and random numbers, but this is really going to be relevant to a lot of the simulations that we're going to do. For example, way down the road, at the, you know, the Really, at the end of this video series, there will be a video about genetic algorithms. How do we simulate that process of evolution in code? One of the things we'll need to do in an evolutionary system is pick parents. Pick parents based on their quote unquote fitness. We want to map that fitness to a probability of being picked to pass genetic material down to the next generation. That's going to involve a highly custom um, set of random numbers. If you imagine this is all sort of all these parents, all these members of a population, some will be more likely, some will be less likely to be picked. Now there are a bunch of different strategies for doing that. Um, one strategy that's actually employed in the genetic algorithm examples, which uh, if you could, <laughs> the video doesn't exist yet, if I had, once I had made them all, you could just skip ahead and go look at it, is this um, uh, what I'll call the bucket approach. Imagine we have a bucket, and what I really mean by a bucket is an array or an array list. We're going to get into these data structures in more detail when we start to look at particle systems. But for now, we can think of a bucket of stuff. What if I just put some numbers in it? What if I put zero, a bunch of zeros, a bunch of ones, a couple twos, uh, and a, uh, a, a, few, a few ones, a couple twos, a couple threes, and a one four? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Whoa, whoa, whoa. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That's way too many things. <laughs> let's put a few, let's let's uh, take out a few items. Okay, so three, six, eight, nine, ten. Right, great. So what is the chance that we will pick a one from this collection of numbers? Well, I tried to make it a, a 10 total, so you can see there's three ones, there's a 30% chance we'll pick out a one. So this is one way, if we sort of know what our options are, we can create a list of those options and add certain elements multiple times to make them more likely to be picked. We could easily also do this with an, a regular array. If we look at an array with five elements in it, you know, we pick a random number from this, we're 40%, it's 40 chance of picking a zero, and a, a, I'm sorry, an 80% chance of picking a zero and a 20% chance of picking a one, right? Four out of five chance of picking a zero. One out of five chance of picking a one. So this might be something that, you know, just try building this in code as a little quick exercise. Make an array, pick a random element from the array, see how that maps to probability. Um, this would be a quick exercise you could do for yourself. But the technique that I want to look at now, rather than the bucket approach, <laughs> is the picking two random numbers approach. Um, this is. Um, so let's look at this picking two random numbers. What do I mean by that? So let's say we're back to our meerkats. <laughs> I must draw uh, this strange meerkat. I'm, I know this is pretty unnecessary taking of time. Okay, that's our meerkat, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, we want to pick heights for that meerkat. What if this is the probability, not a bell curve anymore, the probability distribution for our meerkats is this. We're much more likely to have tall meerkats than short meerkats. We still might have short meerkats, but we're more likely to have tall ones. So let's say we're doing the following. We are picking two random numbers. Float R1 is a random number, and I'm going to say between 0 and 100, just for sort of ease of thinking right now. In the example, you'll see I always pick a random number between 0 and 1, because that it just sort of normalizes everything to a range between 0 and 1. But right now, let's, let's, let's pick two random numbers. 
between 0 and 100. Now, I'm going to write something that looks a little odd to you. If R1 is less than, or actually, I, I don't know why, I like to think of it in reverse. If R2 is less than R1, you know, happiness and joy, and we have got a fine random number. Otherwise, sadness. Go back and pick a random number again. What we're doing here is we're trying to find a methodology for which we accept the random number we pick. We pick a random number. That's the random number we hope to assign. I lost my meerkat to the meerkat's height. But we have to find out, does this random number qualify? And the way we do that is by picking a second random number. How often will R2 be less than R1? Well, let's say R1, just for the sake of argument, is 50. We pick 50. Now we're picking another random number between 0 and 100. How likely is R2 to be less than R1? 50% of the time, we'll get a number less than 50. If we pick 90, 90% 90 of the time, we'll pick a random number less than 90. If we pick 10, only 10% 10 of the time will we pick a random number less than 10. This second random number allows us to check. If it's less than the first one, then it's OK. We've got a random number. Otherwise, we don't want to use it. We need to pick another random number. This makes it really easy for high numbers to qualify because the, qual the second random number will often be good. Low numbers will be very hard to qualify because the second random number will often be higher than it. So this methodology can be quite good. If, and the thing is, this formula here is y equals x. We know the formula for this line. We're just determining is the value we pick below that line. But we could, have, uh, we could do something exponential. If you have some crazy binomial, paranomial, polynomial, graphing math function, you could use that to figure math the probabilities. So um, you could also have this be line segments. And you could use some uh, simple math to determine if a value is below the set of line segments. So there's lots of ways you could go farther with this. But in a very simple level, this is this. And so uh, we kind of went on for a long time here. But let's walk over, press this button, uh, to this example where you can see this in action. So this is actually a graph of the random numbers we picked. And we're seeing this, look at this curve. Well, if, if you could guess right now, I actually didn't look at the code before I ran this, so I'm going to guess. I think that's y equals x squared, not y equals x, right? We're exponentially even more likely to pick higher numbers. So let's take a look at the code. What are, where are we doing this? We're picking a random number. I, don't, I feel the need to put this here. Um, we're picking a random number here. Float n equals Monte Carlo. I called it Monte Carlo. It's like a Monte Carlo simulation where you're gambling, kind of picking lots of numbers over and over again. It, um, uh, if only we were gambling, it would be a lot more fun than me just talking about picking two random numbers. But anyway, um, so if we look at this function now, we can see, aha, we pick two random numbers. Here's our math function, y equals x squared. If the second random number is less than y, the first random number is squared, then we found one and we can return that random number. Otherwise, we've got to loop back. We're looping back and picking random numbers over and over again until we find one that's OK. There's a little extra code in here, which just counts you know, if we did this 10,000 times and we didn't find a random number that was qualified, like maybe there's a problem. We don't want to be stuck in an infinite loop by accident. But truly, um, you know, uh, uh, probability-wise, we should be okay. You know, this isn't this isn't perfect science here, but this this will do in this case. And then, of course, you know, we'll just return the value zero if we're having a problem. So this is a technique you you might sort of. Um, Try to, what I would say as an exercise is you might even try to come up with your own custom distribution, whether you use the bucket method or this method, and see if you can assign those random numbers to some system you're developing, some design, whether it's just uh, you know, heights of objects, shape, colors of objects. How can you seed a system with some custom distribution of random numbers? Um, and that is the end of this video. Next video, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to press a button, stop, press a button again, start recording. We're going to talk about Perl and noise. And actually, after Perl and noise, we are done with the introduction to the nature of code. Uh, we will be moving on to the material for chapter one, which is all about vectors. Okay, I have to hit a button that stops this video. Goodbye.